In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Every so often, the Cathedral Office receives a phone call or an email or a letter from people who are tracing their family tree and are trying to find out information about a great-great-grandparent who may have lived in this area and who may have been baptised, married or buried from a church in this area. You'll note the use of the word may. The popularity of programs like Who Do You Think You Are? and affordable DNA testing kits like Ancestry.com mean that we have the possibility more than ever to discover what or who we are made of. We are naturally curious beings. And I think we like to find out more about our past history because in a sense, we hope it will help us to understand our present more deeply. Certainly two years of pandemic season has seen people reignite interest in their origins. And when you think about it, the term that we use to describe our ancestry, a family tree, is a good way to describe these family charts, these charts of belonging and descent, because they start off small and blossom into something large, ultimately with branches wide ranging. However, not all family trees look like spreading eucalypts. I think family trees are much more like the trees we see around us. They can be trees where there are lots of branches or only a few. They can be trees which show the effect of the environment in which they were grown and nurtured. All the trees on this hill lean to a certain direction because of the prevailing wind. So too, our families, our family trees, often bear a shape which shows of external influences on the lives of those who make up the branches. In my family tree, on my mother's side, we are a small twig in a very vast tree. My mother's father, my grandfather, was the only child of an only child. And so whilst our particular branch of the tree certainly flourished in this generation, with 14 great-grandchildren for my grandfather, there is a bit of the tree where we are just a twig. And this means that when we come together at family reunions and gather for the obligatory family photo, we are actually in the very fortunate situation of knowing everyone that's part of our branch, because it's just us, us as we grow and blossom in these new generations. So it is with us as disciples, Today we begin Advent, a season of life. We anticipate a birth and we look for Christ's coming again. Advent is a season about growth. We look for signs of new life and our readings are replete with these messages today. And as we look for an end to this pandemic season, it's right that we should in turn look for signs of new life amongst us. In the reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we hear of a righteous branch that will execute righteousness and justice. And in the gospel, Jesus speaks of the fig tree, the fig tree which is the last to shoot, to bear new shoots, but whose shoots are signs of life and growth and fruit of hope for the next generation. We know about reading the signs, the signs particularly last week, this past week, of weather. We know what it means like when the sky looks a certain color or when it feels like rain, which seems to have been every day this past week. 
When we travelled to the United Kingdom in 2019, one of the things that distressed me the most was I would see the clouds gathering in the evenings and I would think it was going to rain. And it didn't, because that's not the sign of rain in that place. But for me, those clouds were. We learn to read the signs according to our context. We know when it's hot early in the morning what the day will bring. We know that feeling when the clouds build up late in the afternoon and the electricity is quite literally in the air. We read the signs that are relevant to us in the place where we are, just as the people listening to Jesus did then, and just as we are still called to do now. Last week, Canon Roger challenged us about our discipleship. He challenged us to consider what difference our life is making, our faith, to ourselves and to others. In our faith and life lived out, we see these shoots of new life. We see signs of growth. And our faith family tree is built on generations of disciples. Sometimes there have been times of great flourishing. Sometimes there have been twigs which have faithfully held on until full blossoming came once more. Sometimes when we look back, we can see the signs of external influence which shaped the tree in one direction or another. But we are the result of generations of faithful discipleship. We are the green shoots they saw. We are the hope in which they trusted. And just as our forebears are the ones who have shaped us and shaped who we are and where we are today, just like our family trees, we can look to them, but we can't go back to that time. We can't grow back on ourselves because shooting forth in new life means going forward. This Advent, we are called to remember that we are coming back, not going back. We are not growing back, but we are growing new. As we look around us, in this season of birth and new life. The signs of new life, of growth, are everywhere. At Evensong throughout this season, we'll be reflecting particularly on what it means to say yes to God, to say yes to the new, with all the risk, all the fear, all the sacrifice that that entails all the unknown. But inherent in that is also the cost of saying no. As a parish community, we are called to remember that this is a season for us to grow, to grow expectantly. But first, we must notice and nurture the signs of new life for it is in this new life that we see hope, hope for the world, hope incarnate in Christ. Amen.